Welcome everybody to Small Steps Big Life. Oh, this is so much fun. I so enjoy this format. This is my third show in this format and uh, I'm just delighted. It's immediate and fun and inclusive and uh, I'm particularly honored today because my dear friend Lynn Rose who gave me this idea is in the house <laughs> and some love for, for giving me this idea. I'm just having so much fun with it. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Please let me introduce our guest today, the lovely and talented Mindy Odlin. She gave me some things to read, which are great. So I'm, I'm just going to read them. Mindy Odlin is a host and spiritual director for Spirituality Today TV, a nonprofit organization support that supports spiritually focused organizations to grow through the development of small group programming. The author of What If It All Goes Right? Mendy has spoken to audiences in 43 states and four countries about the power of positive thinking. She is the founder of Unity Online Radio, an online spiritual radio network where she hosted their first weekly broadcast, The Leading Edge. As the network producer, she grew the network to more than 20 programs, 100,000 listeners, reaching people in more than 60 countries. Why am I interviewing you? <laughs> Mandy is a member of the Association for Global New Thought and author of Let It Begin With Me, 21 Voices for the New Peace Movement. Speaker, author, and facilitator for almost two decades, Mandy Audlin's transformational talks, seminars, and retreats have made her a leader in the human potential movement. Mandy is a certified passion test facilitator, SQ21 facilitator, and a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming a highly sought after inspirational speaker, coach, and consultant. Mendy is passionate about putting faith into action and turning dreams into reality. Well, aren't you the perfect person to have on this show? Yeah, hey, pretty impressive, huh? Pretty impressive. <laughs> I've, been, I've been busy. I've been busy. <laughs> so for people who are joining us for the first time or who will be watching this at some point in the future, my name is Nathan Aswell. I'm based in Vancouver, Canada. Mindy is based in Evergreen, Colorado, which is half an hour away from Denver. Yeah, half an hour away, yeah. Up in the mountains. Yeah. Cool. And I had the good fortune of meeting Mindy at a Unity conference that happened in the Seattle area in September, about a month ago now. Mm -hmm. And was just immediately taken, Mindy, with your sense of service and uh, your whole presentation on uh, small groups and I've had the good fortune of connecting with you several times since, and I thought, boy, if this show is all about inspiring people with um, uh, the stories of people who are living big lives and got there by taking a series of small steps, you are just a prime candidate. So I just had to have you as part of today. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. You know, for those who don't know you well, who are just like getting the Nathan experience for the first time, um, at the conference, Nathan was doing music, so you know I'm used to seeing you with your with your bass guitar. What do you, I don't know what you call that. It's like bass guitar. My stick. That that yeah. incredibly <laughs> talented. So um, it's fun to to get to play with you in this forum, and I, I love this idea that you have for you know it, it does start with with those little steps and just consistently yeah. taking action over time. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a great place to start. Why don't we? Uh just take us to, you know, for me, I guess I think of it as there's some sort of a, a turning point where something happens There's a shift or something happens in your experience that suddenly makes you hungry to move in a certain direction. And, yeah, you know, based on everything that I know of you and everything that I just read, I mean, this has been inside of you for a long time. You've been manifesting it in a long time, but where did it all, where did it all start? You know, I think you're right. I think it all does start with like a burning desire, you know, like whatever that might be. It's like that seed that kind of festers until you do something with it. <laughs> uh -huh. So I, when I was a kid, I, I had a speech impediment. And so wow. I was a really shy kid, introverted kid. And I never spoke up. I never, you know, I probably least likely to be a public speaker <laughs> if you were to ask my high school class. Because I, growing up, you know, when you're a kid, you have a speech impediment kids will be kids. I don't know. They'll, they made fun of me whenever I'd open my mouth. So I would, I would not open my mouth unless I had to. And even when I got my speech impediment taken care of through speech therapy, 
those kids I grew up with through junior high and high school. So they continued to make fun of me long after the issues <laughs> resolved. And it wasn't until I got to college when uh, I was away from all of those people, when I had really a chance to recreate myself in a new way, mm-hmm. that um, a friend of mine told me about the college radio station they had. And I signed up to uh, to be a disc jockey, <laughs> which was a little step because it seems like a, it felt like a big step. But really, I was in a little room smaller than this one uh, all by myself with a microphone. So I kind of felt like I was all by myself. Mm-hmm. But it was that little step of giving me a voice and, and putting my voice out there, which was terrifying at the time. <laughs> nearly <laughs> passed out after the first time I turned the microphone on. <laughs> I was so nervous. Uh, but it was exciting at the same time because there was that seed of desire that you know, that's something that's like, you know, I have a voice and I have an opinion uh, and it's, it's time to get it out there. So, And was your slot in the middle of the night or like when were you on? Was it weekly or daily or? Oh, I was um, I, I had a weekly. I started out doing news once a week mm-hmm. and then I, I moved into a 6 a.m. Um, Thursday morning, 6 to 9 a.m. was my slot. Wow. And I, I got to turn the radio station on in the morning because college students are usually not up before 6 a.m. And Jeez. then my second year, I ended up being the operations director. So I ended up actually training the other wow. DJ. So, yeah, once I started talking, I just didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's on and on and on. Wow. So keep going. Okay, so now, you know, the next year happens and you're, you're basically running the station. Yeah. So, you know, I had a lot of... Um, administrative skills. So it was kind of like natural once I was able to, and it was, it's interesting. I actually remember the very first time we did a live remote. So, you know, radio stations where they go on site and it's coming to you live from wherever we were doing a blood drive and it was on campus and they had the big, you know, red cross van there. And I remember our station manager was doing all these remotes and he was this huge personality you know, he was like Mr. Born for Radio Guy. Uh-huh. And we were standing out there just kind of recruiting people, giving out free stuff. And he said, hey, next break, Mindy, do you want to do it? And I said, you know, OK, you know, I'll, I'll try it. And I was all nervous. But he handed me the mic. And when I you know, I was listening to the studio and they were saying, OK, now we're going live. Here's here's Mindy, you know, live at the blood drive. And I remember holding the microphone and just saying, Hi, I'm Mindy, and I'm here live at the you know the blood drive, and, and it, like it flowed out of me so naturally wow. that I remember looking at my general manager, and he looked at me, and he was like, "Where did that come from?" It was it was like it was in there, was like this thing that was wanting to get expressed, and once I had the mic in hand, it came you know easily, and of course since then. I've done a lot of um, training and a lot of you know speaking workshops and Toastmasters, and you know I, I've cultivated my craft but you know that's where it began was just you know hey this feels really good and really natural and, wow. that's great yes yeah. so so i'm thinking then that uh um you know this progressed for a time a period of time and then there was some desire in you to be um uh, more in control of your content, I'll put it that way for like, <laughs> put in this well, moment. it's actually, a, you know, if you look at, I tell people my story of where I've been and it looks so random, mm-hmm. like, this, you know, like sporadic path of, um, you know, starting out in radio, graduated, worked part-time at a radio station in Connecticut, mm-hmm. part-time at a bookstore, <laughs> I did the overnight shifts for a while and then came to Austin, worked at a um, classic rock around the clock radio station and um, did that for a while, part time, because DJs are a lot of times part time. Yeah. And I found a uh, there was a video production company that was hiring, so I did some video production, you know, when I wasn't on air, hmm. and uh, and kind of got into that back when digital video was like no one had heard of it. <laughs> we were sort of the pioneers of that. So you know, I started editing video, and I, I started working for a company that did sales training and influence training and things like that. And I was there. Um, content developer in the video production suite. And so I was spending hours of my time in this tiny little studio, editing other people, teaching people how to do things that, you know, there was something inside of me is like, I want to be on that side of the camera. Right. You know? It's like, I know what they're saying and I, I could piece it together and I was putting together the flow and I'm like, I could be doing that. I could be doing that. But you know, it really, it wasn't until I, you know, sort of had a life bottom out, you know, those, 
fantastic dark nights of the soul yeah. where, um, you know, I, I went through a divorce and in that I had lost my job. I had to sell my house and like everything flatlined. And, um, that's when I start joined a church. That's when I went to therapy. <laughs> that's when I started, uh, learning neurolinguistic programming. Like how do I train my mind mm. so that it's supporting me and doing the things that I want to do. Right. And it was just a complete, um, sort of recreation of, of myself. And part of that was, um, getting involved. I did uh, the landmark forum. I did all the landmark stuff. And every single little, st I mean, it's like little step after little step after little step, every right. single one of them would lead me to something new. And mm -hmm. it was through Landmark that I was doing, you know, one, I don't know, I did like a bunch of seminars through them. And I was doing one of them where I had to do a project, a leadership project. And I thought, you know, I want to bring inspirational teachings. I was tired of doing the computer training and clicking and all that. Like, I want to do something that's really going to change people's lives. So I decided I was going to do a workshop for high school students mm -hmm. and I did, I'd never done anything. I never worked with high school students in my life, but I found, I found a school that was an alternative school that was open to having me come in and do something. And so um, in planning that I had someone email me, they said, you know, Hey, there's this great college speaker coming to town. His name, Patrick Combs was his name. And I said, you should check him out because he works with your, demographic so he would be a good role model no. so i emailed him he was coming to austin where i lived and i couldn't make the date that he was in austin but he was going to college station which was not too far from there and so i emailed him and i said hey i see you're coming i'm going to come see you here's what i'm working on is there any way i could talk with you after you do your your thing and he invited me out to dinner and was so nice and he said you know if you really want to learn this you need to work for this company called Learning Forum out of California and they'll teach you everything you need to know. Wow. So they've already hired, you know, so it'd be next year But I went online and I filled out an application and sure enough, they had one opening left and they said, put together a video and we'll interview you. And next thing I know, I'm in this training program that was the most life changing hmm. program I'd ever been in. Like really, really intense facilitator training. I learned so much. And then I got to go teach these high school students, 120 high school students for 10 days with oh, wow. three other facilitators. So there were four facilitators and uh, you know, it was like crash course in being interesting. <laughs> what was the, uh, don't be polite. They won't say, Oh, that was good. If it wasn't good, they'll tell you. <laughs> what was the age range of the, of the high school students? They were um, ninth through twelfth grades, hmm. so yeah, it was it was the academic skills and life skills program. Super Camp is what it's called, and they still do them all over um, college campuses throughout the country, throughout the world. So I, I got to go to Hong Kong and teach kids. I got to go um, all over the country and and do these amazing programs, and, uh, and I learned so much. It was like all those little steps, and then it led to this huge opportunity for me to to grow as a speaker and to grow in, in what I love to do. And that's what really cemented it that the, this is what's mine to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go with that one. Oh, oh, oh. Say, say that again. You froze up for just a second. Oh, sorry. Okay. I didn't freeze at this end. So, and I think we're getting an echo now, which I didn't need to, need to turn your, your computer volume down. Sure. There we go. How's that? So, um, I think probably okay. So how long ago was that moment where you really felt things got cemented? Well, I, I was in my late twenties, I think when I really landed on, um, you know, I, I done radio. I'd like to talk and speak and that kind of thing, but getting out in front and doing these like life changing transformational programs, um, that was in my late twenties and, uh, so much fun. So much fun. So from there, I decided, you know, hey, what am I going to do the rest of the year? Because these camps are only in the summer. So right. I built a, a company doing leadership trainings for college students. And right. I started hopping around the country, going to different colleges and being there, um, you know, to do leadership training for orientation teams and student government teams and, and things like that. And it was so much fun that, uh, you know, that sort of became my first business. So I, I got my entrepreneurial muscles uh, <laughs> strengthened while I was uh, out there with the colleges. Uh, I just want to put a pause in here for a second. I just want to acknowledge a couple of people who have joined us, Patrice and You Control TV. Hi. Thanks so much for being a part of our conversation. 
Uh, I'm in conversation with my friend, Mindy Arlen, who is based in Evergreen, Colorado. And uh, she is a speaker, group facilitator, author, fantastic human being. And that's why she's on the show. And so uh, in keeping with the name of my show, Small Steps, Big Life, she's just talking about her journey and all the small steps into the amazing big life she now lives. <laughs> I just want to acknowledge your daughter, Jenna, who's in the background. Right there. <laughs> yes. I want to tell her that we can see her. And she's there she is. She's a good sport. Yeah, she's she a is. good sport. She's got herself a cup of hot cider and we're, you know, settled in. <laughs> gonna say hi. Um, she's going to say hi. Hi. Oh, there you go. So hi. this is what a big life is all about, you know. Is all with, with all the things on the bio and all the different, you know, credentials, it's like what it all comes down to is, is you know, what makes you happy. And yep. um, this is this is number one on my my what makes me happy list right there. <laughs> Good job. It looks like it. <laughs> so, um, so um, so just to kind of uh, uh, go back just a little more detail about how you started getting the word out when you were saying you were putting the word out to, and started traveling around the country and working with college students and yeah. a lot of cold calls, that difficult process. Well, you know, um, I had some friends, you know, when you start doing something like that, you meet other people doing it. And right. if you can find people who are like a couple steps ahead, <laughs> that's always nice. Right. And I had a couple friends who were a couple steps ahead of me and they kind of got me in the loop of, of what to do. In fact, Patrick Holmes, who was the one who first introduced me, um, became uh, a really great resource for me and helped me kind of get my foot in the door, as well as some other well-known speakers on the college circuit. And, you know, for the college market, it was a lot of um, showcases. So we'd go to conferences and you do like a little spotlight, you know, 10 minute, almost like a TED talk would be now. Um, and then all the students would come, all the people that would hire speakers would come and they, you know, you're basically auditioning and they'd bring you in. So, you know, it's lots of trade shows and, you know, creating all the marketing stuff and, um, you know, spending just about every dime I made in the beginning, putting it back mm -hmm. into, you know, making the booth and, you know, creating all the things. So, so how did you feel about all that marketing stuff? Because I know for everybody or a lot of people, that's a really challenging, Oh, I can't do that. Or I don't have the money to do that. Or I yeah. can't do it well, or they just, they're so afraid they don't even know how or where to start. Well, and here's what I notice a lot is I'll see people, you know, it's like there's two kinds of people. There's people that will see I need to have a website and I can't afford one. So I'm stuck or right. I can't afford a website. So I'm going to learn how to make a website. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like whatever you need to do, you just, you know, roll up your sleeves and you do it. And that's kind of I think when you get started, you got to have that sort of well, whatever it takes. That's what I'm going to do. And if I need to learn how to do graphics, then I'm going to learn how to do graphics. And if I need to learn how to um, make a website, you know, I make a pretty good looking website. <laughs> Not that I want to be spending my time doing that anymore, but, um, but you know, I, I learned what, and I still do. It's like, whatever I need to learn, I'm going to learn it so that I can um, serve the people that I'm serving in the best possible way. Right. So it's, it's nice when you can outsource that, especially from the beginning. And this is where I love your idea of small steps because when I start something new, I go to every website of people who like, I want to be like them. And I look at their websites and I see what they're doing. And I'm like, okay, well, that would be cool. I'd love to have a video course or a membership site, or I'd love to have all these really cool things. And I build this vision in my head. Um, mm -hmm. But if you, if you're thinking you need to have, you know, the studio and the crew and the, and the whole thing to get started, then it never happens. And most of those people never started with the whole crew and, and the big site and all that. They just started with something small and it grew into that. So, um, and that's a place where I have found myself getting either frustrated or stuck is thinking, Oh, I'm wanting it to be perfect from the beginning. And it, um, you know, when I can kind of let go of that, <laughs> so, you know what, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start, you know, start where I am with what I have and, you know, it's sort of that spiritual idea of loaves and fishes. You know, what have I got? <laughs> How can I use this? And, and it, it, somehow, by some miracle, it, it always ends up being enough. Right. And um, thinking about, you know, the, the, the four steps in my talk, the second one is asking for help. Uh, you've already talked a little bit about that. The, uh, the um, programmer who had all that experience and always connecting with people that are just a little bit further ahead than you. 
Yeah. Are there any other people that kind of come to mind, mentors or people, just influential people who were just in your path at the right time? Who yeah. Well, you know, food? when I was um, first starting my, my business with the college students, I was working out of my basement. I was living outside of Baltimore. And I had a friend of mine in San Francisco who was in a mastermind group with other women, and they were studying Abraham Hicks. So oh. it was like the, the whole idea of, you know, feel good, <laughs> just go in, whatever you're doing, like get, your, get yourself aligned before you pick up the phone and make that, that sales call. And so we had a little mastermind group and we would get together and uh, once a week, we would just fire each other up, <laughs> we'd just get fired up. And one of the things that we did was this little what if exercise that, you know, what if everything goes right? And what if it's easy? And what if it's fun? And, and so it was this fun little thing that just got us all excited, you know, just sort of in an excited frenzy for our business. So we could go out there and, and, you know, it's frustrating sometimes when you're trying to start a business. So it's nice to have people that can just help you, you know, look, look at the bright side. So I started taking this little exercise with me into the colleges and I would use it as an energizer. So I would put them in little groups and I'd have them do these little what if circles um, based on whatever objective they had. And I started getting all these responses from these students telling me of these amazing things that were happening that tied in with that little icebreaker, you know, that little energizer that I was doing. And I kind of just kind of filed that away in my brain until, you know, I don't know, it was probably eight to 10 years later. When was it? When The Secret came out. So maybe it was four or five years later. So this movie, The Secret came out. And by then I had moved to Wimberley. I was leading a a church there and in my community uh, was Joe Vitale, who was one of the stars of The Secret. Right. And so when that movie came out and I was leading the church there in Wimberley, um, Joe said, hey, I got a, I got this preview copy. We can watch it before anybody else. Would you like to do a, a screening at the church? So I said, yeah. So we pulled up the big, you know, the big screen movie thing. We had this we packed the house watching this uh, movie, The Secret. And when Joe was there, Joe was going to do a Q&A at the end. And right. when he got there, I think he was a little under the weather or something. And, and he said, hey, will you do this Q&A with me? Just kind of give him some backup. And so I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So we got up there at the end of the movie and did a Q&A on law of attraction and how do you manifest things and had so much fun that wow. Joe said, hey, let's do a workshop together. So we do this workshop and I'm like, oh, I need to pull out this little what if exercise because this mm -hmm. could be really fun. It lifts your energy. Mm -hmm. It's all based on Abraham Hicks law of attraction. So I do this little exercise and, and afterwards Joe was like, you know, that would make a really great book. <laughs> and so that's, you know, my book, what if it all goes right is, is based on that, you know, it's a little exercise that started when I was first starting my business and then expanded into, um, you know, working with college students, expanded into a, a Q and a, and, and next thing you know, that's, you know, that's my book. Great story. Yeah. Uh, my partner, Jana Stanfield, who you've met, of course, uh, she and I met someone about a year ago and they talked about the difference between uh, using affirmations and asking what if questions. Uh -huh. uh, when we use affirmations, the mind very quickly goes to, well, no, that's not true. Because that's not true. <laughs> yeah. not. Whereas if we, phrase it like, if we phrase it like a question, the mind wants to generate the answer, wants to generate that reality. So I used what if statements all the time. What if is great. It really gives you a back door into your own creativity. And, you know, since then, now I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and I think the mindset piece is, uh, you know, that's a big part of those little steps is to be able, when things do get frustrating or when there is resistance or when it doesn't go the way you think it should have gone, it's like, that wasn't the way I had imagined that going to be able to reframe it in your mind and say, you know, well, what if this is going to lead me to something better? And what if, you know, it's, it's, it's all okay. And what if, it's uh, there's there's some good in this. I just haven't found it yet. <laughs> what if it shows up easily? So those what if questions can help us turn the energy around so that those frustrations don't stop us or block us. They they might just slow us down in any little bit. So I think you've just answered the next uh, my next question, but let me ask it anyway, just to see if something else pops up. Um, why do you persist? You know what keeps you going on your path? And I think. My sense from you is that because you keep asking what if questions, you keep on being eager and curious and excited about what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, for me, the what if is a tool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like I know when my energy is off and I know that I shouldn't be doing anything when my energy is off. 
-hmm. So it's like, until I can get my energy back, it doesn't make sense for me to do anything because it's just going to be kind of feeding this kind of if. So I use the what ifing really as a tool to get my energy lined up. But really, it's like what makes me persist um, to me, that's like a that's a soul. That's a soul thing. It's like I think there's there's something inside of all of us that's wanting to get expressed and wanting to get um, put into the world. And, you know, whether it's teaching or healing or um, nurturing or whatever it is, building something, inventing something. You know, we all have that something that I, I don't know, you know, call it God, call it the divine, whatever you want to call it. I think there there if we are in tune enough with ourselves, we start to identify those things that really is like when those things are missing, we're not complete. You know, for me, if I'm, if I'm not teaching and if I'm not teaching things that are really like changing people's lives, I get so bored. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's actually kind of depressing for me when I, if I go through periods where I'm not able to use my gifts, um, it's, it's difficult. So um, yeah, I, I don't know what that is. But I, I think we all have it, and it's, and it's more than mindset. You know, it's it's what's in the the heart space. Yeah. A calling. Yeah, that's, that's my phrase for it anyway. I like it. Yeah. Feel yeah. free to. Eat. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, I want to come back to. So, oh, let me just take a second and just for, and for people who may be joining us late, I'm in conversation with Mandy Audlin, who's based in Evergreen, Colorado, close to Denver. And uh, we're talking about her big, fat, juicy, sweet life because this show is called Small Steps, Big Life. And Mandy's just sharing uh, sharing information about the small steps she's taken along the way to get to where she is today, which is um, changing people's lives, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Mandy, I want to come back to something you said about five minutes ago. You used the phrase uh, leading a church. Leading a church. I did do yeah. that. Yeah. What does that yeah. mean, leading a church? I so I, I had, um, you know, gone through divorce, you know, I told you about the whole, you know, bottom out life experience. Um, so I moved, moved back to, I moved to Baltimore, just got away from everything. And there is where I met husband number two. <laughs> I got it right on husband number two. And I brought him back to Austin and we, we, uh, he's not a real spiritual guy. You know, he thought there was something, but you know, he, he, I mean, I was totally into spirituality. He was a little, uh, not so much. But we got to Austin and we found this church that we joined and I was on the road a lot. Right. I remember I'd come home from a, uh, a retreat that I'd done, a weekend retreat. And he had gone to church on Sunday without me. And there was a speaker there. Her name was Edwin Gaines and she's yeah. a prosperity teacher. She's a very well-known prosperity teacher. Um, there's a great book out if you want to check it out. It's very good. Yep. Um, so he saw her and he was all inspired. He was like, you know, she talked about abundance and mindset and, and affirmations and all these different things, tithing. And, um, he, and he said, she's going to speak tomorrow night at a different church. And he, he said, I want you to come see her. So he took me. So he saw her two, two nights in a row. He took me to come see her. And we sat through the workshop and got so fired up that at the end I said, honey, we're doing it. We're, you know, it was like a 40 day challenge of tithing and volunteering and prayer and affirmations. And like, we're doing the whole thing. We're going to like full out do this thing. Yep. And we went back to our church. We signed up for uh, a program at the church, another 12 week program based on prosperity. Like we're diving in, diving in deep. And in doing that, we started writing down our goals, you know, our vision. And one of the things we had on there was that we wanted to lead a, uh, I wanted to lead a spiritual retreat center out in the Texas Hill Country. Uh, which is just outside of Austin. Right. So we started like playing as if, you know, we, we didn't have any money for this. We hadn't saved up or anything, but we, we just started thinking about it. So we started going to, um, I got magazines. I started circling, you know, this is a property that I would want to buy, <laughs> you know, if I had, you know, $2 million. Right. So we started going to these, um, we found a home and garden show. We we're driving down one Sunday afternoon. Here's a billboard home and garden show. And I'm like, hey, let's go. We can figure out how we want to landscape our spiritual retreat center. So we're just kind of playing, you know, as if. Yeah. So we go in, we, you know, we get a little ticket. And of course, there's booths everywhere. And I walk in the door. We're in this prosperity class. And I'm like, honey, I'm going to win everything. <laughs> I'm signing up for everything. I'm going to win everything. And I, I did. I won like steak knives. <laughs> and we won a $100 gift card to Target. And the gift card to Target was so interesting because the way you redeemed it was by going out to the Hill Country to sit through a real estate presentation 
you know, to buy property. So we're like, hey, that's going to be how we'll learn about, we'll learn about the hill country. We'll see where our retreat center is going to be and we'll get a hundred dollar gift card from Target. Perfect. So we go to this place, this real estate office. The guy who was supposed to show us around couldn't make it. We had some other guy, you know, take us around and he showed, he drives us way up in the hill country and he, you know, parks us at this empty vacant lot that's for sale. And he says, so does any of this sound interesting to you? And we said, you know, honestly, we just moved to Austin. We had just bought a house. So we're not really looking to buy land right now, but someday we have this vision of having a spiritual retreat center out here in the hill country. Right. And he said, really? He said, uh, my church just bought a 43 acre facility and we're looking for someone who does leadership development for our board. Would you be interested? <laughs> so we go out and I said, well, what kind of church is it? And he said, you know, it's a unity church. And that's, that was the church that we were going to through all of our prosperity teachings. And it was just like the hair on my arm just stood up because it was like such a synchronicity. And, and that was unity of Wimberley. So they were just getting started, had just, just that week closed on a 43 acre facility that um, they had no idea how they were going to pay for it, but they <laughs> signed off on a mortgage anyway. And so here I come with my entrepreneurial mind and my vision of having a spiritual retreat center. And by the end of our 12 week program, we had a 43 acre ranch with a uh, junior Olympic swimming pool and tennis courts and a uh, sanctuary large enough to hold over a hundred people. <laughs> wow. So how about that? Actually, Sometimes the little steps lead to big miracles. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I haven't done uh, I haven't done Edwin's forty week forty day program, but I have read the book Four Spiritual Laws of Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity, something like that. Edwin Gaines. Yeah, fantastic book, and I it just uh, to in fifteen seconds have had an incredible experience around forgiveness in the last summer that continues to resonate through me. Mm -hmm. And about a month after that, I was thinking. She didn't Edwin write one of the chapters in her book on forgiveness, that that's one of the pillars of prosperity. I had never combined those two ideas. Yeah. And yeah. She says that debt is a forgiveness issue, which is really interesting to look at that way. In fact, I remember when she came back, cause when I was leaving the church, we brought her in as a guest speaker pretty frequently. And I remember at one of the events, my husband went to her. She has this whole wall of CDs for sale and things that she's done. And my husband went to her and said, okay, I, 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 here's my 20 bucks. I can get you know one thing. What should I get? And she said, if you can only get one thing, get the program on forgiveness. It's the most important thing you can do. So, yeah, it's, it's really interesting how that connects to you know our sense of worthiness. If we don't feel that sense of worthiness, if we're res holding resentments towards ourselves or towards others, it's, it is a block to the flow. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, for me, I've just been noticing how, you know, in my resistance, I have just been aware of and hated the phrases letting go, surrender. And I'm realizing now that what I needed was the verb to go before those words. The verb is forgiveness. For, uh, forgiving is what makes all of that possible. Is what yeah. Is real. That's that's it, isn't it? Yeah. It, without that, then those words just get annoying, don't they? <laughs> well, because they're just words, you know. Until, yeah. until you figure out how yeah. to live them, and I, I didn't realize that forgiveness was the key. So it's just yeah. Yeah. I wanted to discover that, but enough about me. So, and then what happened? <laughs> and then what happened? And then what happened? And then I had a little beautiful baby girl, mm -hmm. and my life changed again. And being in a ministry 24-7, we actually lived at the church. We lived at the retreat center. Wow. So, um, you know, we were always, I mean, I had very good boundaries, and everyone really respected when I was in my, my little apartment. They didn't they didn't bother me. But, um, but it was, you know, it, ministry is a pretty intensive um, job, especially with a, a new little baby. So about that time, I had been going and studying. I wasn't ordained, so I was just learning as fast as I could go, taking as many classes as I could to get on an ordination path. Mm -hmm. And every time I'd go in to take more classes, um, I would meet people and network and do what I do. I'd talk marketing. like I, I was like this with the marketing person at, at, at our denomination. Mm -hmm. And so when I was there, I would happen to be there one weekend to do some testing. Mm -hmm. And it was a weekend that they were having a big uh, re retreat. They were celebrating you know, this big unfoldment of a new building and all the different departments were there. And I saw the marketing guy out on campus because I was just hanging out, you know, meditating before my big test. 
And I said, I said, hey, what's new? And he said, hey, we're having this event. Why don't you come in and and uh, brainstorm with us? Because you've got a good marketing head on your on your shoulders. Come on in. So I come in and I see all these different things going on. And and I get to sit at the marketing table and brainstorm. And they're saying, you know, what if we did like a TV show? And everyone's like, oh, no, that's too expensive. TV time is so expensive. And they're like, well, how can we you know, get the word out? And I had done through my college radio business, I had done internet radio when internet radio was like itty bitty baby, like 2000, 2001, I was doing internet radio. And I said, you know, you could have the same effect of having a television show, but you could reach the whole world if you did it as a radio network. Hmm. And they were really, <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, I've done it before. I can show you how to do it. And so I, I put together a, a plan for them and they said, you know, of course, then they're like, well, would you lead this? And it had, the timing was perfect because it was right when my daughter was born. It gave me a chance to to downshift into normal working hours and to work from home. And so that's how I um, created and founded the Unity Online Radio Network. And I got to do the first show, which is really fun. And I got to interview amazing people. I've gotten to interview Deepak Chopra and Eckhart Tolle and um, all, all my favorite people, Martha Beck and um, Lynn McTaggart and Joe Dispenza, I mean, every week it was just connecting with these amazing, incredible people. And of course, in doing that, I learned a lot because I was interviewing them. Um, but I also felt that desire within me that's like, I want to be on the other side of this interview. You know, like that kind of feeling started popping up again. And so I started with when Jenna was um, itty bitty tiny, uh, I started working on my first book. And, uh, and that was the What If It All Goes Right book and I would work on it in tiny, tiny increments when she was napping and when I was off work. So I had, I had full-time job, normal full-time job, not crazy full-time job, but I had like 30 hour, 40 hour a week job yep. and, uh, and a little baby and all, all of it at home. And then when in my spare time, I started writing and I was doing what if workshops, what if up workshops, um, so that I could get content for the book. So I would you know, go out and I'd teach it and then I'd say, what's going on and what's happening with you? And then I'd incorporate those stories back into the book. Okay. So it was incredibly slow, but, um, but it was fun. And it, it took me a few years to get it all together. But, um, you know, what was nice is that in going, you know, step by step, those little steps, I was able to uh, really build some success stories to actually see people using it and, and see that it, it works. You know, if you're just writing about something that you haven't tested, <laughs> you know, it's like, good luck. But I actually got to see it through and see people that, that really were having some major life shifts by going through the process. What a brilliant idea to use your workshops as fodder for the book. That's, that's great. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's great to do them at the same time. You can kind of, you know, throw out some content and, yeah. and, and I, you know, I even do that now. My next book that I'm working on is based on this idea that I'm using in our small groups. Mm -hmm. So um, I see Jenna in the background. She's she's a she's a busy little kid back there. Yeah. So anyway, my next book is is based on um, you know, how do you create spiritual growth as in an individual and also you know through community. And so our small groups program that I've been launching, I've been doing this for about three years now, um, has been giving me a lot. It's helped me create the model, and now I'm able to test the model and use some of the stories that I'm getting back. To, uh, to make sure it works. I mean, you don't want to be writing books about things that you're just kind of guessing about. Yeah. I mean, it sounds good in my head, but does it really work? So, yeah. you know, it takes takes a little longer. But when, I, when I'm when i done, I feel like I've got something that has been tested and that is, uh, you know, authentic and, and real. Yeah. So tell us about, tell us more about the small groups, uh, small group work. That's how I met you. I got to see yeah. your presentation, yeah. really enjoyed it. And, well, yeah, the, the what if book is really um, was designed around a mastermind concept of, you know, where two or more are gathered. That's where energy, you know, ideas flow and things like that. So that's uh, I was using it really in the in my what if work in a, in a real limited way. Mm -hmm. And I had also used it when I was leading my church. Hi, <laughs> we had another guest. My husband just walked in, which is great. Hi, Sean. <laughs> so, so we also used it in my church where, um, you know, when I, I didn't know how to start a church, so I started studying, you know, who's doing it well. And I started studying these mega churches and they all had these small groups programs. So I kind of dabbled in it then. Um, but after I had done my book tour, and was kind of looking at what's next. Um, I came back to the small groups thing and, and I'm like, you know, there's something about this. There's something about how it's structured in these larger churches that is, um, 
really creating not just growth in terms of big church, because, you know, that's nice. It's, it'd be great to have, you know, 20,000 people coming to my church. You know, that that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. But what's even more important is I was seeing that these programs were creating this tremendous um, transformation within people. You know, these are different denominations, like all different denominations were using this program and people were changing. Their lives were changing and they were um you know, contributing and doing community service and doing mission work and making this massive impact in the world. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, what's what's the glue that's holding all that together? And and small groups seem to be it. So, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I want to bring this into my denomination in a way that it hasn't been there before. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been kind of playing with those ideas and rolling it out and testing it. Um, it's a little more challenging because I'm not just testing it in little groups that I coordinate. I'm testing it with churches and it's, you know, it's sort of a leap of faith for them <laughs> when I'm pioneering something new. But what's nice is I have the track record from the other things that I've done that have made it easier for me to, to get this uh, up and running. Right. So, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting how one thing leads to another. Absolutely. So can you say a little bit more about the small group process? Because, I mean, I got a lot of that and I loved all of it. So I'm just curious, and not curious, I'm uh, wondering if you could give like just, I don't know how you want to approach it, but just, you know, I know it's based on masterminds, but if you, if you could, I don't know, I remember, I think you had about five or six, there was a... Yeah. It's five, good memory. Yeah, that's good. So, so basically the idea is this. It's like if we're going to grow spiritually, what are, what are the, the I call it spiritual disciplines because it's like what are the things that I really need to be focusing on in my life so that I can be a healthy, balanced spiritual being. Yeah. And so what what I do is I, I identify these five and then we work in small groups to support people in having those five in their group right. in a healthy, balanced way, because you won't have them in your group in a healthy, balanced way unless it's in the individual's in a healthy, balanced way. And then that ends up creating healthy, balanced ministries and churches. So um, so th here's the five. So just kind of for those who are interested. Yeah. Um, so first is, is a communion practice, which for me is, you know, prayer and meditation. For me, walks in nature. That does it for me is getting outside, um, sitting on a rock, you know, <laughs> or writing music or, or playing music or playing with children or dogs or pets or whatever it is that kind of gets you in that flow of feeling connected to to something more. Um, so that's the communion practice. Second is the connection piece, which is really having friends and having fun and having people that you can um, connect with on a deep level that you can share with, that you can feel like you can say anything to them and that they will not judge you, that they'll love you no matter what. Like, so that's, there's the communion, the connection. Compassion is then being there for each other. So having the circle of friends that you can um, share with. And then beyond that, being there for each other when uh, you know, when life throws us a curveball, and it does for all of us. So it's, it's nice to, to uh, be able to not just receive that, but to be someone who can give that to people that have made a difference for you. So that's a compassion piece. We talk about community, so it's community service. It's connecting yourself with uh, with people who are different than you. You know, it's like being out there in the world in a world that uh, you know has its issues, <laughs> which it does. Um, but being able to be out there and serve in a way that is exciting and and fun. Um, and then the fifth one is challenge, and the challenge is really about setting some. Uh, accountability for my own growth. I'm responsible for my own spiritual growth. If I look back on the past year, here we are coming up on the end of the year. If I look back on the year and I can't really see where I've grown, uh, it's probably because I haven't been very intentional in my own journey. So, you know, it's like setting intentions for here's where I want to be at the end of this six weeks, 10 weeks, three months, and then having some accountability. The small group is great for accountability so that we can, um, not, you know, pound each other down if we don't do it. But I just know that I have someone that I'm going to have to say at the end of, you know, so much time, did I do it or did I not? And to me, that's a huge support. Just just knowing that I have someone who's looking out for me and, and knows what it is that I've, I've set a mind to do. And uh, so that's, that's the process. And it's interesting because I created it. You know, we talk about creating it in my head first. So I created it as a program. And then... I um, I was 
helping out one of my churches that was getting going with small groups and I led a small group. So I got to go through the whole 10 weeks of, of studying this and practicing it in my own life. And it was so interesting to see the changes that I experienced mm. in going through it, not in the creating of it, but in the experiencing of it, um, that, it that I can, I can, I can testify. <laughs> I can say it really does make a difference. It really does work you know so uh, it's been a lot of fun and now of course i'm getting feedback i was just checking email today i had a, an email from new zealand uh saying that they've been watching the program and they had so much fun with the first video it took them two weeks to talk about the first video <laughs> um and then i had someone from where was she uh spain i think who was who emailed me you know like this is making such a big difference so i'm, I'm getting feedback from all over not to mention the churches here in the united states that are using it so it's exciting to see that, you know, the things that, that start out here can translate into something that can make a difference with people. Absolutely. Well done. So when you say churches, uh, are you saying now that people outside of unity are using it? Other denominations are beginning to use the program? Yeah, we have. Um, so we are international. We do have a Canadian church. <laughs> so we have the you know, U.S. and Canada. Yay. We're international. Um, right now, um, you know, I my roots are in unity. I created the radio network. I know everybody in unity. Um, but we are reaching out to um, Centers for Spiritual Living and other New Thought communities, other um, progressive Christian churches mm -hmm. that are looking for something a little bit different. So as we move into 2016, we're kind of broadening our scope and and uh, and reaching out to really anyone who's on a, a spiritual path or that is it has a spiritual organization that is you know very inclusive and and um, of of similar mind. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, the one question I haven't asked you, well, I feel like you've been answering it all the way through, but again, let me just ask it and just see what comes up in you. Um, the fourth step in my, my process is being great, grateful and specifically grateful for the process. And I've been hearing you say that all the way along is you acknowledging, the, you know, the, the, the power of every step and, you know, being influenced by people who are a little ahead of you or just, you know, rolling up your sleeves, doing what needs to be done, being open to life, throwing you curveballs, changes, uh, you know, in cities and, you know, being a mom, all these kinds of moments. So I'm hearing you a lot of, a lot of stuff about, you know, adaptability and flexibility and, you know, just being present and allowing mm -hmm. what's going on to just be at peace with whatever it is and to just roll with it. So that's, that's what I hear is kind of the common thread. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add or? Well, I love, I love that gratitude piece because, you know, that's um, in, in my book, I talk about it um, as love, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, the, the highest form of love is, is to be able to be grateful for where we are, even if we don't really get where that fits into the bigger picture, you know, right. to be at peace with where we are um, as even before, you know, before we try to go out there and create this big, big life, you know, it's like the vision of the big life is great, but if that vision is only there because I think my life sucks right now <laughs> and I want to fix it, if I'm trying to create the big life to fix the life I have now, it doesn't work. So the mm -hmm. only way we can create the big life is by first finding something to be grateful about in the life that we have, because that's, that's what opens us up to those opportunities. So gratitude is really, you know, I, I see it as a cycle, but it's a cycle that has no beginning. So, you know, gratitude is a great place to start is, you know, to look at the things that we're discontent about and find find a way to reframe it so that we can find something to appreciate, even in the things that are frustrating and even in the things that seem like setbacks or the things that seem like confusion or you know, lack of focus. You know, all those things can serve us in some ways. And so if we can sort of not beat ourselves up for you know, taking a wrong what feels like a wrong step. And, and find something to, to appreciate. That's, that's a great place to begin. And then the other piece is, you know, just like you said, that none of us do this alone. I mean, if you try to do it alone, you're certain to fail <laughs> because it's not how we're wired. It's not how we're meant to operate. So there's so many that have gone before me that have mentored me. And, uh, and I do my best to pay that forward. And, um, you know, you saw me at that workshop. I actually had someone come up to me at the workshop and say, Mindy, you know, you shouldn't tell them 
everything because then they won't come to your program. They won't pay to come to your programs. I'm like, I am not worried. I, you know, I can sit here and talk and talk and talk. I will not run out of uh, things that I can do with them that will be helpful. So, um, you know, I just, I like that, uh, that mindset of you know, just give it when you're going to, if you're going to give it, give it all you got. Yep. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. I uh, just want to acknowledge Marsha, who just joined us. Thanks, Marsha. Uh, I have been speaking for almost an hour now to my good friend, Mandy Audlin, who's based in Evergreen, Colorado. And uh, this show is Small Steps, Big Life. And Mandy has just been talking about her journey. And um, yeah, just having a wonderful time talking to her. So hello, Marsha. Hi, well, Marsha. Yeah. I love this format. I love that people can tweet and share and um, it's really fun to see everybody that's been joining us. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. everybody. And great. then uh, very shortly after we're complete, this will uh, this will be available online, like within an hour of the show being completed. So I put it on my site and I'll also put it on uh, YouTube. I have a, uh, a, a YouTube channel and on my channel, I have a, a playlist of Small Steps, Big Life, all of the podcasts. So this will be there. Nice. So we'll be able to find it easily and I'll send you the links, of course. Maybe. Yeah, I'll put it on my site too. Fun. Yeah. So uh, what's next? What's coming? What's coming? You know, one of the things, we just moved to Colorado this year, and one of the things that I have loved about being here is just being immersed in mountains and lakes and um, creeks and <laughs> deer and elk. And I, it's just been really good for my soul just to be in this environment. So it's kind of slowed me down a little bit, which has been really interesting because in, I feel like I'm uh, much more balanced now than I've ever been before. Um, I have more family time. I, you know, I, I stop working at three 30 because that's when Jenna gets home from school. <laughs> so for the most part, unless I've got something special going on like this, it's like right now I'm usually, you know, cooking dinner <laughs> and, you know, being incredibly, you know, just, just going totally into a uh, mom mode. And, uh, and I've, so I've scaled way back in that driver side of me that used to stay up till midnight working on websites and trying to get it all together. And what I found is that I am as productive or if not more, um, when I'm balanced, which is feels totally counterproductive. It feels like I need, you know, if, surely if I'm working more hours, I would be getting more done, but there's, uh, maybe it's the letting go that you talked about. There's something about saying, you know what, this is what I'm going to give to this because I want to give, you know, something, I want to have something left to give my family. That's most important. I'm also getting uh, much better at um, taking time for myself. So, you know, doing some yoga in the morning and taking a walk. I'm here at Evergreen. We have a beautiful lake. You know, so it's like a mile and a half walk. So I take a little walk in the morning around the lake before I come into the office. And I'm doing more things for myself than I've done before. And I, there's something, I don't know if it's it's just the balanced energy. Um, I feel like the things that I'm doing have a, a greater impact. Uh, maybe I'm making that up, but it, it just feels like um, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm just trying to make myself feel better. But I, I'm happy, you know, and I, I'm I'm not willing to stress myself out over um, the details like I used to. So I think that's kind of the next step for me is really leaning into the things that I love. You know, I'm I'm volunteering a lot in my community, mm. which has been really fun. Uh, just signed up to lead a Girl Scout troop. So that'll be wow. fun. Like we'll be doing like board breakings and like deep, I don't know what we'll be doing, but it'll be fun. Um, you know, I, I, I volunteer at our, our local nature center, which is fun. Um, meeting people and socializing and um, really finding that balance in my own life. And, I, you know, a lot of that has really been doing that work around those five C's is, you know, creating that time for community service, creating that time for communion, for, you know, filling myself up and, and having social time and time with friends that um, that's been a big shift for me. And it's, it's actually creating more power. I think when I speak um, because I'm not spread so thin. So okay. it's yeah. good. Uh, I'm curious to see how you would answer this question. And I, you've, you partially answered it in terms of evergreen being the, the wonderful nature uh, mm -hmm sanctuary probably isn't the right word, but just anyway, 
just how, how integral nature is to where you currently are. Mm -hmm. But kind of looking at it one step back, uh, do you think that the, there's a, I don't quite know how to phrase the question, I'll say it this way, a difference in the energy between Austin and Denver slash Evergreen? Is there something about that that's kind of adding to where you now are that yeah. there's a way that you can be now that you weren't in Austin? Yeah, and we actually, we, we hopped around a little bit. We lived in Dallas-Fort Worth for a little bit before we came here because that's where my family was and Jenna was little and all that. So um, we came from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is a huge metropolitan area. Um, and we really liked it. I mean, there's a lot of really good things about that. You know, I think there, what, what it makes me feel like being here, I feel like, you know, when you have a potted plant that's like been in the shade for a while and it's just not doing anything and you move it and then all of a sudden this thing sort of comes to life. I feel like that's kind of happened for us, for, for my whole family, for my husband, for my daughter, like just being in this environment is really kind of, I don't know, it, it's, it's putting us, in the right environment. It's really made me think about, you know, what is the environment that we mm -hmm. need to be able to grow? And I know it, this isn't for everybody. I mean, we're in a little town, we're secluded, we're surrounded by trees. There will be some who are as invigorated by the city as I am by the trees. But I think the question to ask is, that's important is, you know, what is the environment in which I can best thrive? And you know, I thought I need to be in a big city because that's where the opportunity is. That's where the speaking engagements are. And I had all these reasons why I should, you know, Dallas Fort Worth should have worked out really well for me, but it didn't, it, it felt like struggle. And I got here completely removed from, you know, most large speaking opportunities. And my speaking calendar is fuller than it's been in a very long time. And I'm actually turning away speaking engagements because I don't want to be on the road as much. So, um, you know, it's been really fascinating to see what um, being in the right environment can do. And I think that's not just physical environment. I think it's uh, the environment of, you know, who are the people you associate with? And, you know, what are the things you, you put into your world that, that that makes a big difference? Yeah. Beautiful. It's it's wonderful to hear you speak uh with such peace and clarity about not only the impact of uh, where you are, but the impact of work-life balance really being balanced. Yeah. The impact yeah. that the, 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 the uh, seeming contradiction that the more space you allow for quality of life, the more productive you are. It's interesting. Programming, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm getting there. Still working oh. on that. Still working on giving myself some time, but I've been doing, I've done really well this week. Like it's a day by day, but I've done really yeah. well this week. <laughs> well, excellent. I'm glad, glad I caught you on a good week. I've had a good day. You did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people who would like to, um, you know, just learn more about you and uh, do you have one website, several websites? Oh, I have so many. I need to uh, like have an umbrella site that since I don't have that yet. I'm I'm okay. setting aside November, December to like revamp all my websites. But okay. this, if you want to get like what's there now, know that it's going to get better. But what's there now? Um, I have a site at whatifup.com, and that's okay. my book. It has all the what ifing and the mastermind for that. Um, okay. There's also information at spiritgroups.org. And that's what we're doing with the small group ministry. Um, okay. MindyAudlin.com is my main site for speaking and consulting and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, can I tell you my little secret? This is kind of a secret that I haven't told anybody. I promise I won't tell a soul. Don't tell anybody, okay? This is right. Just for us. So I just started a new little blog called um, Nature. Is it nature.church? And what I've been blogging, so I mean, I just started this, but what I've, the reason I created this blog is because every Sunday after I go to church, um, you know, my husband usually goes mountain biking or fishing or something. That's his church. Is he, he goes out and does something. And then we meet up afterwards for a picnic and a hike and, and that kind of thing. And I started thinking, you know, our, our picnics and our hikes are starting to feel as much or more like church than being in the building for me. So I look forward to those outdoor experiences and they're like sacred time for us as a family. So I, I put together this little blog that I'm just doing my first email actually this week. So, you know, you asked me for websites, I, I got to throw it out there uh, where I'm sending out Sunday emails for people that want to either after church 
or instead of church for people that don't do church. Um, it gives you a little, uh, you know, thought for the day. I have a, um, a photo challenge that people can tweet about. And I also have a kid's activity. So if you have families, you can do something with the kids. And, uh, and that's really fun. So I, I'm just having so much fun with it that I'm, I, I can't stop myself. <laughs> So well, what I'd like, uh, what I'd like, Mindy, is if you could <clears throat> just send me those things. I'm, like I said, this will be available online within the hour. So if you could, when, when we're done, just send me an email with the links to the sites that you want people to be able to connect you, awesome. uh, to connect to you, and I'll include those with the link for the for the video. So all that information is in the same place. Cool. Thank you. That'd be great. Look forward to staying connected. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for spending the last hour with us. I, my name is Nathan Aswell. I'm based in Vancouver, BC, Canada. The show is called Small Steps, Big Life, and it's all about honoring uh, the big lives of people uh, that I think are just juicy, fantastic, and interesting, and inspiring others with their journey. And my guest today has been Mindy Odlin, who's based in Evergreen, Colorado, recently moved to Evergreen, Colorado within the last 10, 11 months now, I yeah, think it's been. Right. And... Um, thriving on many levels and she has much to offer she's a teacher and a coach and speaker and uh, you know basically a holy woman so if uh, you would like to be in touch with her the information to reach Mindy several websites I will put uh, I will include in the link for this uh, the show which will be available on my YouTube channel under small steps big life and will also be available under the uh, video page on my website nathanaswell.com Mindy, you're a sweetheart. I just, I celebrate you and I'm, I appreciate you making the time today and uh, please uh, thank Sean and, uh, and uh, Jenny or Jenna. Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. Jenna. I, I appreciate, uh, please tell them how much I appreciate you carving out an hour to be with us. And well, I thank you. I'm so excited to uh, get to be here as you're kicking off things. Yeah, I love to be there in the beginning when the seed yeah. is, is is just sprouting and, and I see great things for this. And I love that you're putting this out there for the world. And um, thanks so much for including me. It's great to be my, here. My great pleasure. And I look forward to uh, to seeing you. Well, yeah, it, we, it now seems that we'll next meet up in Dallas when you are uh, Doing the music for, and sorry, not doing the music. When you are leading some of the services around Christmas time, Jana and I will be there as well. And I look forward to dancing with you, co-creating that way with you. That's going to be fun. Absolutely. Okay. See you soon, Randy. Thank, Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Christmas. Glad you could join us. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I uh, hope to see you again uh, next week. Next show, we'll uh, I'll be doing a couple of shows next week from San Diego. Uh, leading up to the San Diego Conscious Music Festival. So I hope you can join me for those. I will post notices on my Facebook page and Twitter and LinkedIn to let you know when else will be. Okay. Love and blessings, everyone. Blessings. Bye-bye.